Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have another great episode on the 150 dupe challenge. To start with, there's a new update. Because that's right, folks. Fast Friends' newest update has launched. And the major notes of the update say there's significant performance improvements. Well, it just so happens that we have 150 dupe colony to really be able to see how significant those performance improvements are. There's several new duplicates with some amazing hairstyles. And some of those duplicates even have new overjoyed and stress traits to include the wonderful yodeling. There's also new critter morphs in the poke shell and pit variety and numerous crash and bug fixes. And we're going to take a look at several of these things in today's episode. And I can't wait to explore more of what this beautiful game has to offer. Unfortunately, one thing that the update did was break some of the mods as expected whenever a new update hits. In this case, the mod that we were using to pause the printing pod whenever it was ready is no longer working. But there are a couple of ways to do that in the game as well. First, we need to make sure that we clear this current printing pod that is ready for a fresh duplicate print. And that way we know it'll be exactly three cycles before the printing pod is fully charged and ready to go back to printing. In this case, we're going to take this beautiful May here. They're a farmer decorator with innately stylish iron gut and gourmet. They are unempathetic, which no one cares. I also just want to take a note. One of the updates, check out this new animation. Thinking they're getting this animation because they're gourmet. And it's trying to show that they really love the yummy, yummy food. Well, welcome to dupe number 111, William. Now, we'll get to William here in a second and make sure that we set all the schedule and priority and skills right, just like we do with every dupe printing. But first, here's the new system that we're going to use to let us know that the printing pod is ready. Notice when we highlight over the printing pod, it says, hey, the next print's going to be available in exactly three cycles. Well, if we use our timer sensor here, we can switch it over it to cycles just like this. Once it's on cycles, you can set the green duration to something very small. Unfortunately, 0 0.01 is still six seconds. And then our red duration is going to be that full three cycles. So it's going to take three cycles to come all the way around. And then the timer sensor is going to send a green signal to this automated notifier. And on an automated notifier, we're going to put in the tooltip, hey, there's a new dupe ready to print. We're going to make it do the boing boing sound. Then we're going to pause it and zoom right here. And this should be good enough to let me know that I need to come print a new dupe without too much time going by. And then all of a sudden we're not actually bringing a new dupe every three cycles. And to test it out, all we have to do is hit reset timer. You noticed it zoomed, it paused us. So let's hypothetically say we went into the printing pod, we got another dupe. And then we just unpause it. Yeah, it's still sending a green signal, but the automator notifier has already paused and zoomed once. And then over here on our timer, the long three cycles goes before it's ready to print again. Something else I wanted to highlight that was pointed out by the comments, we may have been getting a false reading off of a lot of the athletics. You notice here this duplicate has a total athletics of 15, but that's because it's taken into account the fact that they're wearing an Atmo suit. So when we were scrolling through here and looking at different athletic score, it could have been displaying the fact that athletic score was fine, but they were wearing the suit which brought it back down again. And all we're going to do to fix that is we're going to make sure all the early dupes have full access to the doors. And we're just going to have sort of a threshold that, hey, you have to be in the last 50 dupes to be able to get outside. So being that we're at 111 dupes, we're going to let everybody from 60 on back run outside. And that'll be plenty of people to take care of everything that needs to be done. Checking on Victor Neves. They're doing just fine inside the rocket, creating out those data banks. We have nine data banks already. Make that 10 data banks. They have over a ton of algae still up here. They've only been up here for a cycle. They still have 89 cycles worth of pickled meal. And the one flaw of this design is there was nowhere to put the carbon dioxide because we didn't build the filter system that we normally do. We knew it wasn't going to be that serious. You can see here, we only have one small tile of carbon dioxide. So what else are we going to be doing during this episode? Well, I thought of a couple of things. First, I figured it's time to break into this minor volcano and build ourselves a proper industrial sauna. Second, we need to make sure that we have enough food. I've been keeping a close eye on the food and we're still sitting at around 500,000 calories, which is good for us for about five cycles. The issue is we're down to three tons of slime. Well, almost. We still have a lot to core out here, but unfortunately, unless there's another slime biome hidden under through here, that's about it. 
So we're going to do some exploring, make sure that we know everything that's in here. And that way, once we core out all of this area, we'll know exactly how much slime we have to continue with all of our dust cap production. We have this major farm here. As long as the temperature holds out, we got some down here and way down on the southern part of the map. And then every once in a while, where there's excess carbon dioxide, we just throw another row of dust caps. It's been working okay. In an interest of not disturbing all this beautiful carbon dioxide that is keeping these dust caps going, we're actually just going to dig straight down through this biome here and then start digging over. There's nothing too significant or dangerous about this biome. So we're just going to let the dupes go in all willy nilly. I'd rather not let all that water out. So I think what we might do is one of these. Just like this. It'll get rid of the water. Shift it all over to the right. And that way the dupes don't get sopping wet every time they come through here. But this last little corner is pretty much the only place that's unexplored on this entire map. Now over on Smeriel, we're actually going to start having some excess bog buckets. So I think what we're going to do is tie this into the power and start cooking up some of those swampy delights. Tie it in with the power, we'll just run a giant cobalt. Well, actually, you can probably save a little bit of wire just by going from there all the way into our grill. We'll tie in the microbe muster, but we don't plan on using it at all. I also figure since we're running bog buckets, we might as well put in real toilets and real sinks because the excess polluted water will just help feed the bog buckets. So I think we'll actually start one at a time just to make sure that the dupes still have a place to go to the bathroom. Now over on Smuriel, we have Alexo and John Mann. John Mann's one of our older dupes, so they're pretty much equipped to do a lot of different things around the colony. This is good because you'll notice the morale over here is only sitting at 12 and 9. Alex O can do a lot of the grilling, but if they're doing all that grilling of the Swampy Delights, they might not have as much time to do some farming. So in that case, I think it's time to send another dupe over to Smeriel. We're going to remove this liquid pump, shift it all over, and add another cot. It's going to be beautiful. So what happened was Catherine was busy building these insulated tiles and decided, well, instead of climbing up to escape before I finish this insulated tile, why don't I just build the tile around my head? That seems to be the best plan of action. We will go ahead and deconstruct Catherine and her new tile head and make sure that they can get out, hopefully before they suffocate. Over on our main colony, we have Grignac ready to go. Grignac, a relatively new dupe, duplicate number 102, so they only have the two points into grilling and a point into carrying. I think what we'll also do, once they get skilled up a little bit more, we'll put another one into improved farming and everybody can sort of pitch in on that other colony. But before they suffocate in here, let's go ahead and teleport them over. Now Grignac's bed's not 100% complete yet, but with the additional dupe labor that Grignac has, we might be able to get through some of these tasks a little bit quicker. Oh no, why is Grignac all scared? They're afraid of the dark. Well, I didn't think about that. I think based on how far this lamp goes over here, if we put one right here, it might be able to illuminate enough light onto this cot to where Grignac can get some good sleep because they're about to start really stressing out. So sadly, the light here does not give Grignac the quality of sleep that they are looking for. You can see here, obviously, it's not these two tiles that really make a difference. So we're going to try deconstructing this tile and putting the pneumatic door down one. We'll see if that works. Now I'm hoping this will be plenty of light here. There's only one tile that's not being illuminated. Good news is that our notifier system worked out perfect. Our printing pod is ready for a new dupe. So let's get to that first batch. And we'll start with the digging dupe with a plus nine excavation who's innately stylish and they're a little bit of a plant murderer. Welcome to dupe number 112, Magma Child. Our next dupe is not great. They're yokel, biohazardous, and they're allergic. They do have doctoring, decorating, and ranching, so we'll throw them in a little bit of that. I would have preferred another dupe, but the other dupes in this printing pod were anemic, and we're not even touching that. Welcome to dupe number 113, Steve W. Next up, we have a cooking, ranching, tidying, germ-resistant caregiver who's not a very good artist. I think they're going to end up going into cooking and ranching for their primary job and a little picking up for their secondary. Welcome to dupe number 114, Grakthol. So this lighting system worked perfect. Grignac got a great night of sleep. Enough so we were able to finish a lot of the work in our new bathroom system. Now it's pretty simple. The water is going to come from our same reservoir it's always come from, except the polluted water is going to come up from the bathroom and have priority into this water sieve. 
Well, when there's already enough clean water to supply to all the toilets and sinks, it's just going to continue on over to the bog buckets. So I think we can finally get rid of all these old outhouses and wash basins and have a proper bathroom system. Now, once these dupes are set and there's not much to do, their whole job is going to be just growing bog buckets and turning them into swampy delights. Then we'll take the swampy delights and send them over here to the supply teleporter input. Now, we eventually might automate this system with some conveyor rails, but for right now, I think the hand delivery system will work just fine. So we'll check back on Smeriel once they get everything up and going and this whole system is functioning again. There's a couple of things I wanted to show you from the new update. First and foremost, it's the clothing refashionator. Yes, folks, that's right. Once you have enough snazzy suits, you can take them and throw them in the clothing refashionator and start pumping out some seriously stylish duds. Now, for the cost of three reed fiber, you'll be able to get ten more decor out of them. Right next door, we have our textile loom, and you can see that a normal snazzy suit gives a decor of 30, while all these new outfits have a decor of 40. It's not much, but in the late game when you have plenty of reed fiber, it might be worth throwing it into this new clothing refashionator to get some seriously stylish clothes. My favorite, the new spiffy overalls. The only thing I wish they could have done was added in some other sort of buff. For instance, maybe the spiffy overalls give you a plus one to machinery. The pom-pom knit, plus one to decorating. The citrus spandex, plus one to athletics. Pipe dreams, I know. But during our live chat, someone brought up the fact, well, then everybody would just try to min-max it. And that'd be kind of okay, because you could make some of them, for instance, all the snazzier suits could have possibly 50 decor. Make it worth it to where each of your dupes would be better off in a different type of clothing. We are back up to over five tons of slime because we've pretty much finished coring this area out. There's a few more tiles worth of slime that we're going to be able to capitalize and continue our mushroom production. But also on good news, after we dug down here and made our ways over, yes, this last biome happens to be another slime biome. Looks like we are actually going to make it to 150 dupes. Knock on wood, of course. Which that brings up an important point. There are a lot of ways to skin a pip. We could be advancing our space program and sending dupes out to find more material that could make eventually this colony to be infinitely sustainable. But quite frankly, I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. Because I'll be honest, as soon as we get over 150 dupes, we're going to save and be done with this horrific, horrific idea of a colony. It might be cool to have all sorts of dupes to be able to do all your job, but I've been playing at times one speed for about 150 cycles now. It takes a long time. I started noticing on our main planetoid that we have some hydrogen in our oxygen lines. Somehow, polluted water came up in here and then causes these electrolyzers some damage, which in and of itself wouldn't be so bad, except now there's polluted water in here, which sort of messes up all the gas pressure and everything in here, causing some of the hydrogen to slip down into these gas pumps and then pump it out as oxygen. So once again, we're going to have to break in here and go fix a mess. What looks like happened is there's a little bit of polluted water that ended up in our salt water and brine tanks. You can see it here, there's still some left. Well, that polluted water eventually makes it to our giant water tower. That is doing amazing, by the way. Look how much stored up water we have. Absolutely beautiful. But then it came all the way through the water tower and then eventually into our spawn system. No buenos. So what we're going to do temporarily to prevent any of the polluted water from coming in is we're just going to hook up our pipes in through a filter. It'll come back down as long as it is clean water. Otherwise, it's just going to get dumped. And all that water will dump and come all the way down here and end up somewhere in here. It's a mess, but not a big deal. Actually, instead of adding to the mess, why don't we just sort of add that polluted water to the rest of it? Because clean water is going to go all the way through. Salt water is not going to be on that line because the desalinators are going to clean it. So the only thing that's left for it is polluted water. So we can just tie it right in here and it'll continue on all the way to our water refinement center. That's a lot of construction for such a small problem, but it's not like we don't have the dupe labor to accomplish it. So something new I learned about the canister fillers. They can actually collect multiple gases and the dupes will only take out the bottles of the gases that the canister fillers have. You can see here, there's 15 kilos worth of oxygen, some natural gas, chlorine, and polluted oxygen 
in addition to the carbon dioxide in this canister filler alone. Now, the disadvantage being is that the canister filler can only hold 25 kilos worth of gases. So after it has 25 kilos, doesn't matter if it's your bottle that you want or not, it can't take any more. So we're just going to try to empty some of these storages. Not a big deal. Then we've put a signal switch connected to this gas pump. And that way, whenever we want more carbon dioxide for our space program, we can start pumping it then. Speaking of which, that system worked out well. We have three gas reservoirs chocked full with carbon dioxide, not to mention an entire line full ready to supply more carbon dioxide to the engine. I'm a big fan of the carbon dioxide engines for your beginning rockets because early in your game, you're always going to have carbon dioxide. No need to grab another material. Now for our other construction project. We just finished an entrance here that's got a crude oil liquid lock. Although I really don't love this being only 307 grams, we're going to go with it. We are building some gas pumps here and we need to siphon out all of the atmosphere in here. There's one problem. Our minor volcano still has oxygen in it. And the oxygen is very, very, very hot. And we're going to build some tricky little system to let the magma out. And all of that molten hot magma is going to join our steam and help keep this industrial sauna hot. And the steam turbines that will eventually be strapped up here going. But how to contend with this hot oxygen is a completely other story. Except for the fact, if you notice, it's not a lot. Well, I say that, but there's 5 kilos of carbon dioxide right there. But there's only 1.3 kilos of oxygen here. 440 grams of oxygen here and then 1.5 kilos of carbon dioxide here so the dumb part of me wants to just open it up and let some of this out but i think we'd have to be very 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 careful and just to make sure we're gonna put ourselves in suits first well this is awkward isn't it what are we gonna do here i suppose we don't have to do much of anything we'll just let it stay in line and fill the rest of the docks yeah what could go wrong so we actually have two problems here. We could open this up and this oxygen will escape, but I believe this liquid lock might stay. We're gonna check it, but if so, that means we have to remove this block here and all while not, you know, swimming in magma. Now we're not actually gonna let any of the magma out, so it's only the magma to the atmosphere transfer that we have to worry about. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why don't you just make it a vacuum first? Well, the problem with making it a vacuum first is then when this oxygen is released, that's the only atmosphere will be in there. And then it'll instantly fry all these gas pumps and the dupes. So we're getting some more of the guts of the industrial sauna in place. You'll notice that we have not put the checkpoint here. We still have a lot of work to do in here. Not to mention putting down about 500 temperature shift plates. So we'll end up appreciating having as many dupes here as possible. Instead of just the three that's going to be allowed in here at one time afterwards. Because you got to admit... It makes everything a little bit easier when you have, you know, 50 dupes working on one project. And with that, I do need to comment on, quote, the significant performance improvements. At least as far as my computer and this game and having 113 dupes currently in the colony, I'm seeing some significant performance improvements. The delay between dupe actions is much reduced. Now, if my theory is correct, there's going to be enough atmosphere in here. Yeah, it's going to get significantly more warm. But all we have to do is let some of this oxygen out. Wow, those insulated tiles are 465 degrees. So here's the plan. This might be stupid, but we're just going to destroy these two insulated tiles and see how hot it gets, how quickly. The good thing is it did remove the liquid lock. The bad thing is it's getting very, very warm in here very, very quickly. Let's see how fast that heat's spreading. Oh boy, this isn't good. So the great thing is... Duplicate number 35, no musicians in music anymore, is okay. Despite the fact that they're standing in, you know, very, very hot atmosphere. I think it's because they're standing on a mesh tile. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and put this insulated tile in before they get scalded to death. Then we're going to vacuum this whole thing out and then try again. Hoping that this is a small enough amount of gas to where our pumps will still be able to keep working. Your guess is as good as mine of whether or not that's going to work. Yeah, it was a dumb attempt, but I just wanted to see at least if we can get rid of the liquid lock, which we did. So now when we get this place vacuumed out, 
we'll be able to get the rest of the atmosphere in here removed without causing certain destruction to our entire colony. While the dupes are working on that, I figured I'd highlight what I've been doing in the background for the past few episodes for the eventuality that we're going to need more food. This is our Soval Ranch. This main area in here holds three shovels. All the eggs that they lay go right into this little area here. And if you look behind there, there's one incubator that keeps this shovel ranch filled. So when this shovel is ready to hatch, the new baby shovel will come over here and be dropped off. All the rest of them just starve. Because they're tame, they will eventually go hungry. Unfortunately, they start off with a lot of calories, so it does take a very long time. But when they do finally absorb all their calories at a rate of 4,800 calories per cycle, they die and we are given 16,000 calories worth of meat. All for the cost of some regolith, and we had plenty of it, and still do, from our space biome. But even once we run out of regolith, it's okay. These shovels will live long enough to lay one egg. So until we run out of regolith, we're going to keep adding more shovels to the starvation area. But once we are completely out of regolith, the amount of shovels in here will be fixed. Because each one will lay one egg before it dies, and that's the extra meat that our colony will live on. Right now, we have 32 shovels in there. It's not too bad. And we still have plenty of regolith, so I'm hoping to end up with 50 to 60 shovels. Combine that with our infinite Paku farm, well, we'd have enough food. How did these little guys get out? Let's go ahead and kill them, shall we? For anybody wondering, we now have 152 Paku in the little infinite pond right here. So you might have been wondering, why do we just don't build this all in and not worry about the gases that are sitting in here? The simple reason is we eventually have to get rid of these insulated tiles so the whole system will work behind this mechanized airlock. We don't care if there's a little bit of gas left in this, but what's going to happen is as soon as we destroy these insulated tiles, we then have to build insulated tiles above this mechanized airlock and then seal it in right here. So the quicker we can get rid of those gases, the safer our dupes will be because the heat won't transfer in a vacuum. Is it going to work that well? No, not even close. But that's why we built dupe hospitals. Do you know the normal progress when you're vacuuming out of a room? But as soon as you start getting a real vacuum, it all sort of dissipates. Well, it doesn't work that well when you have 114 dupes. Almost there, but not quite. The question is, how bad is this going to hurt? I think before we open it up, we're going to put a lot of temperature shift plates to be able to absorb a lot of that heat really quickly. Unfortunately, there's not an atmosphere in here for them to breathe, so this is once again going to be a little dicey, we'll say. Our next dupe's a doctor supplying tidier with aesthetic design and a green thumb. Their only disadvantage is they're biohazardous. No one cares. But the best part about them is they're a meep. Welcome to dupe number 115, Top Telly. Our next dupe's a grease monkey that's germ resistant and they're a kitchen menace. They make up for it for being a plus nine digger to start with. Welcome to dupe number 116, William Rollins. Our next dupe is a special treat because they are one of the new friends. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Steve. Steve's a yodeler. When a dupe is happy, they'll start yodeling. And if they run across another dupe, they become serenaded, which then gives them the bonus. It's a pretty significant buff, too, to a few different traits. Now, it wouldn't have mattered how bad this dupe was, but they're okay. Plus 10 to agriculture, iron gut, they can't attack, they're slow on the bathroom, and they're unempathetic. Welcome to dupe number 117, Bari. Well, let's see how long it takes the dupes to do this inside of a vacuum, shall we? Let the record show it is cycle 334. So I had to take a break to show you. All of a sudden, the gas pump started going off, and I'm like, what happened? Well... Apparently a flatulent dupe couldn't hold it inside the vacuum, so now it's filled with natural gas. The good thing we left the gas pumps in place. Well, I would say that's not too bad. It is cycle 335, about to roll over to 336. Now we have a couple more contingencies we need to take care of. First, because so many dupes were coming out here and then they'd catch their breath in this tile, somebody exhaled and blew the liquid lock of crude oil sitting right here. So we need to fix the liquid lock because we want this tile to maintain a vacuum 
and that way temperature doesn't pass through. Now the XL problem won't be a thing once we have an Atmosuit dock in here, so that's another problem we won't have to worry about. We will fix that right before we finish up. The other issue is there's going to be a lot of igneous rock sitting in this tile, and that igneous rock is going to be very hot. We don't want the dupes grabbing it, so to start with, we're going to put a metal tile right here. And that should prevent the dupes from being able to grab the debris until we're ready to receive it. We'll eventually set up another similar conveyor rail system that will take all that beautiful igneous rock and cool it down. For now though, this'll do. I realized we're going to have to actually wait until there's steam in there, and that way this temperature shift plate has an atmosphere to change temperature with because otherwise the debris won't be able to exchange its heat with the temperature shift plate inside of a vacuum. I suppose we could set up a system of metal tiles here, and that way the debris would sit on the metal tile, heat it up, and then keep heating up the metal tiles next to them, but I'd rather not do that. We also need to load our coolant loop, and so we're just going to dump some polluted water right from here and bring it straight down. Now, the key being that you can't actually start your thermo aqua tuner until it's sitting in an atmosphere. So for that reason, we're going to take our liquid pipe thermo sensor and say, uh, don't start unless the temperature is above 2,000 degrees. That polluted water will not be above 2,000 degrees. And lastly, we need to put some water in here, and that way it has something to exchange heat with. We don't want to do that quite yet, because I still want to get rid of all the gases that are in here. Now, the idea is that when we release these gases, there's enough temperature shift plates that'll be able to absorb the temperature in quick fashion. If not, we're going to come right back here and put another insulated tile here, so hopefully we don't end up in disaster once again. But before we do any of that, we are actually going to put down our Atmosuit checkpoint. The time that we needed all those dupes is pretty much over, so three dupes can be able to handle the rest of this work. Now for power, we have hooked all these steam turbines into our main power spine. We do not have them on automation yet so they will run whenever they need to run and this is important especially for the beginning because we're not sure how much they're going to need to be able to run to get rid of some of that heat before we start throwing in metal refineries and the such we also added in another large power transformer that transformer is right now responsible for keeping all these gas pumps going it'll eventually be responsible for this thermo aqua tuner and these docks as well with this atmosphere checkpoint in it, it's time to fix the liquid lock. We'll do that the same way we always do, just by throwing in a tile. Push some of the liquid up and some of it will stay here and this will be left as a vacuum. Perfect. Now it's time to make some huge mistakes. We will just open up this tile and hope that all of these temperature shift plates can absorb enough of this heat while we get rid of the atmosphere. Fingers crossed. All right, so you can see that the gases are coming out fairly quickly and heating this place up to a scorching hot temperature. Luckily, these gas pumps are not raising in temperature very quickly, and it's probably because there's just not enough environment in here to impact the gas pumps. Already, we're down to milligrams, so it looks like this is going to be a success. Now's the time to add a bunch of water in here that the magma can contact and then create a bunch of steam in here. We're going to do it the old school way with just some bottle emptiers and just to drop off a bunch of water. Now, I want a lot of steam in here. Not so much that the magma doesn't really shift around the temperature too much, but enough to where it doesn't cause big spikes. Now, you can see we're down to this one last insulated tile. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get rid of it. I've tried looking for a couple different ways, but I need to be able to seal this in here. But if I remove this tile first, all this magma is going to spill over and bad news bears. Or does it really matter inside of a vacuum? Yeah, maybe we just wait until the vacuum's ready. Okay, I've changed my mind. I think I figured out a way. What we're going to do is we're going to wait until this is a complete vacuum. Then we're going to remove this tile, build it in the way we want to, and then it won't matter because the magma spilling over here won't actually interact with anything other than, say, these pipes. And lucky for us, when sandstone gets above 926 degrees, well, it turns back into magma. Who knew you can go from sandstone to igneous rock? Finally filling up our cooling loop, and we're going to make sure when we do set this, it's not going to be anything aggressive. We don't need that thermo aqua tuner running very often. It's only there to be able to cool these steam turbines. So we'll probably set it around 25 degrees. And once again, we have a perfect vacuum. Well, almost. It's doing that thing again where it just removes all the rest of the gases. And once again, it just takes a lot longer when you have 115 dupes. And there it is. Now we can go ahead and remove this tile right here. 
some of the magma will spill over it'll melt some of this again not a big deal actually before we do that we're going to remove all of this because we have all these pipes and everything but we need to get rid of them before we can unleash our beautiful steam and i would have much rather deconstruct all of this without this atmosphere checkpoint there but chances are someone would come in here pass gas or exhale and then we'd have to put all the gas pumps back in so this is just gonna take a minute a quick check on Smeriel though we're just about ready all we have to do is activate the supply teleporter input and select some food here you can see we're up over 50,000 calories worth of swampy delights and that's after losing some because our dupes can't eat them fast enough but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to say 12 kilos so this will only hold 12 kilos worth of food in fact it's only holding swampy delights and we might as well add swamp chart hearts there too now the difference is this is going to be set to six our conveyor loader is going to be set to five so once the fridge is full it's going to send the rest of it back to the other colony all the while ensuring the dupes on smeriel have enough food to eat so in our digging through here and gathering some of this beautiful slime well we've discovered one of these little areas which is great except for the fact there's a battery down there that's overheating so now we will forever have a damage overheated message in the corner of our colony. But it does show you how high the oil biome goes on this map. All right, so we're back to going really slow again. I don't think there's much more I can do. We just did a quick restart of the game to see if maybe that would improve the performance. But I mean, every program has its limitations and apparently we found this one. So remember our earlier concern about the magma going everywhere? Well, you can strike that. The igneous rock debris from this insulated tile managed to absorb enough heat to where it lowered the temperature of all that magma, and there's now 6.5 tons of igneous rock. Really good news for the safety of us working around here, but really bad news as far as being able to do what we want. So what we're going to have to do now is get one of these beautiful automatic dispensers, and we'll set this to sweep only and we'll put the 6.5 tons of igneous rock right here it's a little bit more manual than we wanted to do it but until this minor volcano wakes up in 41 cycles that's what we're gonna have to do with our automatic dispenser in place we're gonna say sweep only head down to raw mineral and then click igneous rock and then a quick sweep and we should be able to move this igneous rock pretty easily with this part sealed in we can do the rest of this in the steam bath and we need to hurry because everybody keeps wanting to try to get a hold of this igneous rock. So we're just going to turn both of these bottle emptiers to water, enable auto bottle, and copy the settings over. Until then, I'm just keeping an eye on this. Some dupe already tried to grab a little bit. I moved them out of the way, which caused them to drop the igneous rock. The last thing we need is 1200 degree igneous rock landing in this crude oil and then this whole thing turning into a sour gas chamber. We still do plan on putting that metal tile right there, but we want to wait until this is trapped with a little bit of steam, and that way there's something to be able to transfer it. And before we do all this, I was getting ready to explain why we want to trap the little steam in here, that way it could transfer, and I realized in order to do that, I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. Otherwise, steam would eventually come up in here, and it could mess with this whole thing. So while we have the room, we're going to get in there and make a couple changes, because this is categorically just wrong. All right, that is much better. You can see here that the mesh tile is blocked in by two insulated tiles, and that way no gases can get into the mesh tile. That is very important. The magma comes over here to the door. The door opens. Magma falls in, but is exchanging heat with this temperature shift plate, so it instantly turns into igneous rock, which pushes it out to the side. Very important. You don't allow this mesh tile to be open to the environment, or well, you'll have some big problems in here. And over on Smeriel, we're actually delivering our first batch of Swampy Delights. Which is oh so very nice because, you know, they could use the calories over there. We've started the process of dropping water. You can see we have the rain forming. The steam's getting hotter and hotter. Now it does have to heat up every single temperature shift plate. So this process takes a little while. So be patient. Dump just a little bit of water at a time to make sure that you are keeping the heat spreading. But if you dump too much water, then you won't have enough heat to get your steam cloud going before these temperature shift plates end up warming up. We're also throwing in a couple of steel kilns over here, and that way we can get started with some more ceramic production. It'll also help heat this place up. And before we finish with the industrial sauna, we needed to check on Victor Neves, who's managed to pump out 
269 units of data banks, but sadly they are out of algae, which means it's probably best if we just brought Victor home. All we do, change the path, go back to our own planetoid, and we will return with all those beautiful, beautiful data banks. We're dropping in a lot of extra water. Instead of taking the time to use the bottle emptiers, we just tapped into our clean water supply. And that way, all that clean water drops to the floor and then comes into contact with this igneous rock. Nice and easy. This should help all that water turn into steam much quicker. And since we have a nice layer of water here, we can go ahead and turn the thermal aqua tuner on and get that coolant going. Doesn't take much because we're only keeping the polluted water at around 25 degrees just to keep these steam turbines going. Okay, so some definite mistakes were made. Apparently I put the bridge one tile over a little bit too much, which then caused nothing but polluted oxygen when it came in here and flashed. We'll be able to fix that once we get enough steam in here, but boy is this gonna be a mistake that I'm gonna be paying for for quite a few cycles. What's worse is our coolant line now is a little emptier. Oops. Our next dupe is Skilled in rocketry and ranching, and they're a decent interior decorator. The only thing they can't do is cooking errands. Welcome to dupe number 118, Alexander Anderson. Well, I'm going to keep working on this in the background. I need to siphon out some of this polluted oxygen. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Meanwhile, we're taking all the heat out of this igneous rock right here. That's sitting at 1,000 degrees right now. We're also going to get busy adding some metal refineries and probably a glass forge. That'll really help kick up the temperature in here. But you'll have to wait till next time to see it. Full disclosure, next week there may not be a video. I'm going to try to see what I can do, but I will be out of town. But I may try to make it up to everyone by doing a stream sometime during the week. So we'll see. I hope you enjoyed yourself during this episode. And I'll talk to you soon.